Welcome. It's the 27th of October 2012, and this is the video edition of the Health Research Report. And to start off with our first news report that came out just within the past week is something in regards to makeup, or I should say, what's in the makeup. Now, obviously, also in plastics and all the common items, especially packaged foods. Well, there's a little chemical inside makeups which will help you achieve menopause 15 years, or I should say up to 15 years, earlier than actually planned. Well, obviously, this little chemical of phthalates is used as a plasticizer and used to keep things soft, and it's a tremendous number of consumer products. Well, this report in the British Daily Mail came out with some interesting little options. One, they said, to this group of chemicals known as phthalates are already known to raise the risk of cancer, obesity, and obviously diabetes. Two, researchers at Washington University, Missouri, believe they may also cause early menopause, as pointed out in this article. And also, again, these chemicals, as I quoted earlier, are found in plastics, cosmetics, household products, and food packaging. And they don't have to be there. There are alternatives. All right, they said, those exposed to high doses have been found to go through the change at least as early as two and a half years earlier. Even though, again, Dr. Grindler, uh, Grindler, I apologize, told the American Society of Reproductive Medicine a conference in San Diego, California, that some may, women may be going through the menopause up to 15 years earlier in their mid-30s. All right. Now, again, also, too, they said you really have no chance of avoiding phthalates because it is in everything. They said you eat fresh foods. It's not packaged in plastics. But they said that will not eliminate your exposure to it. Again, phthalates is a very well-known endocrine receptor. It is doing a ton of damage, not just the environment, to the people itself. It doesn't have to be there. So, when the option is available to attempt to find something that does not contain phthalates in it, it's time for you as a consumer to start looking for those alternatives. By your choices, you could possibly eliminate phthalates. A lot of, again, a lot of companies, they have the alternatives, but if you don't ask for anything different, it's not going to be any different. It's kind of like bisphenol A and BPA. Once you start requesting something different and stop buying those BPA-containing products, they began having BPA-free products. Something to look at and think about. Unless you want menopause 15 years early, earlier, a little extra obesity, a little extra diabetes. I mean, a lot of these things out there really aren't necessarily your fault, 100%, they need to take away these antagonists. All right, now we go to C. diff. There's a particularly nasty strain of C. diff out there called 027. Obviously, the antibiotics utilized are totally failing against it. And on top of that, in fact, it's even making it obviously contagious. Well, researchers, they reported in what's called the PLOS online, the pathogen version, came out October 25th. What they utilized is they took a cocktail of normal bacterium that are found in the guts of mammals, put them together. There was about six of them, and in their words, quote, researchers used mice to identify a combination of six naturally occurring bacteria that eradicate the highly contagious form of C. diff and the infectious bacterium itself. And they did it without using any antibiotics, but probiotics. Now, I went to the PLOS online, October 25th edition, and looked at their particular study itself. The mixture of probiotics or bacteria they utilize are not exactly common and found in health food stores. In fact, some of them you may be considered a little bit repulsed by or grossed out. However, though, so if you are interested, go to the PLOS online, October 25th, 2012, and you will find the study, there aren't a lot on that day, in regards to C. diff. All right. Now, another endocrine disruptor. This one will help you gain weight really, really, really fast. It may also, by some odd chance, dumb down our children. This is in regards to one in particular, and they named it. Not I. They did. And who is they? This is in a paper called The Accumulation and Endocrine Disrupting Effects of the Flame Retardant Mixture Firemaster 550 in Rats, an Exploratory Assessment 
published in the Journal of Biochemical and Molecular Toxicology. Remember, today's October 27th, and I only go back about a week, so it's within this past few days, actually October 24th. They said the flame retardant mixture as Firemaster 550 is, not maybe, but is an endocrine disruptor that causes extreme weight gain, early onset of puberty, and cardiovascular effects in lab animals. What encouraged him to look at Firemaster 550? Well, there have been a lot of industry studies on it. And the researchers looked at it and said, hey, you know what? This almost looks exactly like the stuff that we're currently banning, which we know caused this problem. And guess what? It is almost exactly like the stuff that they're currently banning. Kind of like a, um, you know, basically like a shell game, per se. Which is disturbing because of the amount of damage this actually does. All right. They said this is the first public data, not industry. This means this, fla this flame retardant, which obviously flame retardants are trying to do the good thing, just using the wrong tool, uh, is capable of crossing the placenta barrier during pregnancy, reaching infants via breast milk or both, past the placenta or through breastfeeding itself. Because they know the flame retardants have been phased out, we're disrupting thyroid function. They knew the Firemaster 500, which we're replacing it with, was very similar to what they were phasing out. Again, shell games. Researchers found that the rapid weight gain in offspring of those exposed as flame retardant by the time were weaned from nursing in high-dose male pups was as much as 60% heavier than the control groups. And we're not talking diet and eating extra calories. We're just talking basically you got this stuff in your system. It's bad enough that you eat the donut, but what's going to occur is this is going to be like eating a dozen donuts. You're going to gain weight like no tomorrow in exposure to this flame retardant. And they said high-dose female pups, obviously the mice, had difficulty regulating their glucose levels as adults, meaning not only the infant exposure had that nasty effect on having a fast weight gain, as they grew, it still impacted them. And they became prone to diabetes. It also, a male pups, caused the coronary or the circulatory system, the arteries begin to thicken creating cardiovascular disease after exposure. The mothers had exposure to it. They didn't even have to have exposure to it. It's just that the mothers were exposed to it while they're in the womb. The study indicates that Firemaster 550 is an endocrine disruptor and raises a lot of important questions. It does raise a lot of important questions, meaning sometimes when we got to look at what we're replacing uh, one bad thing with, in addition to another. Don't replace with the exact same thing. The worst part about it is what the way they found this work is it blocks up or damps up thyroid in the body. I mean, the body can't utilize thyroid. And that thyroid development then affects the development of the infants. Now, if you know one thing about thyroid development, it's responsible for brain development, especially in a developing fetus. By doing that, that means those pups or infants or people born to those exposed to this endocrine disruptor are going to have a higher propensity of lower IQ, attention disorders, possibly autism, you name it. But whatever it is, it doesn't help. And when you think about it, one of the most heavily flame retardant uh, exposed states in the entire country is California. And I'll leave it up to you to find out exactly what other mental condition is higher in California than the rest of the country. All right, now we go to sepsis. Well, they found another simple food item which helps with sepsis. And I don't know why we keep on trying to overcomplicate sepsis. We knew vitamin C helped with it. We knew a lot of things help with it. But another study, which is called the Evidence-Based Complementary and Alternative Medicine, otherwise known as ECAM, they looked at this common food item called mung beans. Mung beans have a way of basically deactivating a very simple inflammatory compound in the body called HMGB1. Now, the researchers also point out you need inflammation. Without inflammation, wounds and infections would never heal, something you don't normally hear about. But in this case, what the mung beans did is they took this M HMGB1 and they reduced its production. What does that mean? Well, when you take sepsis, which usually has a fatality rate of 28 to 50%, by reducing this through an extract of mung beans, 
they increased the survival from 29.4 to 70 percent by basically inhibiting the release of HM uh, GB1 simply through utilizing an extract of something very common called mung beans. Again, the evidence of comp based evidence based complementary and alternative medicine, ECAM. Something to think about. Just came out with the past week. Mung beans may be a very inexpensive, cheap, and incredibly life saving alternative. Well, thank you very much once again. Twenty seventh of October two thousand twelve, and thank you very very much for listening. Catch you guys in a little bit. <laughs>